Welcome race fans. Welcome race fans. Daytona flat track sponsored by Daytona Dodge Jeep and Ram. Day number three, but it's only race number two right here. Look at that beautiful beach. Let's go there tomorrow. Oh no, we can't. We're going home tomorrow. <laughs> We're going home tomorrow. Day three here uh, with the racing at the Daytona short track. It feels like day 300. We have been here all week long, but uh, my tan has uh, improved dramatically because in North Carolina, it's rather cold. So coming down here all week, I have no complaints. It's been absolutely beautiful, except for last night. The inclement weather forced us to push the race to today. And uh, that's not a bad thing for some riders. Well, it's, it's good. You can reset one more time. Again, the track as you had time to work on the racetrack, we had a learning experience from the first night, which was practice. Then the second night, which was a full-on race. Last night, we got practice and qualifying done. And then Mother Nature put an end to the night. So they've learned how to prep this track throughout the week now. Right. I will say for a full week. So I think the track's going to continue to get better. There was not a lot of rubber on the racetrack last night till near the end of the night. So all the practice and qualifying is done. They're going to give them two quick rounds of practice. So... Uh, that will kind of set the line, but I don't think there's going to be as much rubber and as much follow the leader in the first couple of uh, you know first couple of sessions, maybe later on at the end of the night. Yeah, when you say quick, Scotty, real quick, I'm saying six laps out there. That is absolutely nothing. That is enough to get out there, get a feel for the track. You're not making any major adjustments. That's something I talked about uh, with Nick Daniels today, actually. That's Trevor Bruner's crew chief, obviously, Dale's Daniels' dad. And uh, when I was talking to him, he said, listen, we're kind of already in our window right now, so we're not making major adjustments just fine-tuning you don't want to go too drastically one way or another before uh, the racing happens tonight you get into those heats yep so they're they're waiting on something on the racetrack right now should be just a minute or two we'll get out there again two rounds of practice welcome to you race fans that are joining us here live and watching us on fanschoice.tv we'll be on fs1, FS1. <laughs> here real soon so you can tune into all the information so if you've ever wanted to know what it's like to race the daytona flat track we had an onboard yesterday with the insta 360 camera and here is onboard sammy Halbert. this is looking forward this is in the super twins class and it looks like this is the main event look at all these bikes kristen now i'm curious if this is the sammy Halbert incident we're not there yet quite when he gets up to johnny lewis but when i was talking to sammy Halbert about working through the pack here what's hard on a track like this go slow to go fast but sometimes when you're going too fast the person ahead of you is not going fast enough right. and that's when you end up banging bars and that's what we saw a lot of both on night one and night two it, it is definitely hard to, to to slow down for these corners and if you follow somebody in there that goes in too hot you're going to go too hot also and you look, see yeah yeah kale Kochman just went wide down here sammy said thank you very much i'll make that pass i'm not sure which particular race this is in this is probably not the incident with johnny lewis because he's up there how Sammy's much does up here this near look like lima though because you kind of have that nice little cushion up towards the top and last night especially oh this is the feature okay so i was told by production that we are watching the uh the incident the incident okay we'll and see, I, see I did how long to, we can watch it <laughs> i did talk to sammy and he said i was making my uh, apology tour throughout the paddock he said i had a lot of people to apologize to and i said did you say sorry like that <laughs> and uh, he uh, he did not say sorry like that he said but he did talk about the situation with quite a few people that was a nice pass right there by kill copen must have got the drive from the corner be ahead of him, went up the inside of Sammy and made the pass before they got to tournament three. Now Sammy's you know, kind of behind the eight ball, and he's he's closely, slowly working his way back towards the front. Johnny Lewis had a good start. And he's this kind is it. Of We're fading. coming up on it right well, here. It'll take a few laps. I've, I've watched this a little bit earlier. So he's closed up to the 10 right now. That's Johnny Lewis on that 10. Again, we're on, on board with Sammy Halbert. Yeah, I'm actually, we are also live on a, my Instagram live too, and I'm going to send people over to Fans Choice. If you guys want to watch qualifying on Fans Choice, you can. You can also watch the, the racing and all the action a little bit later on FS1. But uh, on the Book of Faces as well, you can also watch uh, the look, qualifying on the Book of Faces. Kristen, look how close. He's got company on the inside, just inches apart. Here comes Kale Kochman, and he's retaliating. And he's got uh, Davis Fisher shot right on through. So what happens here on the short track? If you make one mistake like that, it'll open up the door. Sometimes you'll get freight trained, like two or three guys will go past. But uh, this is a good dogfight right and here. And sometimes if you try something, it works. Right. And you're, you're able to, to move forward in the pack as well because you don't know. And that's what we saw a lot of last night before the rain delay. Guys were getting up in the soft stuff just to see if they could find anything. He's the eight-time champ right there. 
and uh, some of the riders, you'd see them kind of fishtail and then lose it. Other guys were telling me that you did have a lot of traction up there because of the moisture and the fluffy stuff. The, the tires stick better. They're able to get the traction to get the drive, but it's just such a gamble because you could go up there and absolutely lose control. They were trying to use the Harley rake the last few nights. It turn, turns up the dirt just a little bit, and then they added moisture to it, so it's wetter than it has been in, in the past. And you can see there's not a lot of, you know, blue groove or uh, 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 really small group at the bottom you can go up there really and loose, loose stuff just a little bit and it, i mean a lot of the riders on night one had told us it was kind of follow the leader which is why they push back turn three and four uh but uh, to jared Meese's detriment as we saw him uh, you know in a clip ahead he had told me i had no problem getting through three and four i was having trouble in one and two and so a few of the indians uh, were kind of struggling with that i don't know if it's a turn issue or if it's just a jared Meese issue but this has been a uh, vice for him over yeah. the years jared Meese has struggled the daytona short track but you know he's a, he's still an eight-time champion and the nine-time champion scotty parker he always struggled at daytona so maybe it's just their mindset maybe it's just the way they ride the motorcycle but you know some tracks are suited better to other riders and vice versa and this track has always been very kind to johnny lewis in the enfield Royal, well not the Royal enfield necessarily he won here on the production twins class um but he did very well here in the uh heats two right. nights ago and he also won his very first grand national of his career right here quite a few years back and that, uh, that again was on a singles motorcycle but right. uh, johnny lewis likes it down here and now he lives in center hill florida so maybe he's kind of starting to get used to some of this dirt i don't know this uh, is such a cool shot yeah. though i mean check this out this is so cool look yeah, looking looking at this you can see all the dirt flying off these tires but when you're on the outside of the wall you can actually feel that dirt too right like the spectators down here three zone. and four right <laughs> we need to get little signs like at sea world this is the splash zone but definitely coming off the turn into the straights uh, you're getting a lot of that roost and that roost composition is a really fine powder i was trying to figure out what it was and honestly the closest thing i can assimilate it to is baking flour right okay. it is so fine and then it has these little rock pieces in it and it just gets all over your skin it creates this really thin layer and it's, it's one of those kind of tracks it's worse than not worse i guess but it is different than lima <laughs> in that it also kind of just floats in the air and i've been asking a lot of teams are you guys having to change your air filters they're not out there enough to have to make major air filter changes in between uh motos or anything like that but it is a really fine just kind of interesting sediment for sure and i think there's some seashells mixed in with the dirt some sand there's a, there's I was a looking bunch for of different them. stuff our first year here back in 2020 um i found a ton of seashells i haven't found any out there yet so mm. yeah most track's been here. We started racing over here in 2010. Brian Smith joining on Instagram Live. He Isn't says, he supposed to be working? I think he's supposed to be working, <laughs> but he's, uh, he's stalking a little bit. I just waved hi to him. We'll see right. if he has any questions a little bit later. I've never done the Instagram Live thing. Direct, and anyone in the paddock, any complaints, direct them all to Brian Smith this year. He is the guy. Yeah. So um, if you are in the paddock and um, <laughs> you have any problems, make sure you, you text Brian Smith, and then you call him three times so, after that, and then you go and find him. So we've been talking for a long time, <laughs> Sorry, watching this race, and you know it's been a long time. Don't you think these guys, these guys are getting tired yet, Kristen? Uh, you know, I, I asked Sammy Halbert this yesterday because it being such a short track, mm -hmm. I get dizzy sometimes watching it. They don't feel it as much. And he said they sometimes race even smaller arenas, you know, during the winter Ooh. time. And he said on those even, you don't feel it because you have the acceleration and you're focusing on hitting your marks. But yeah, I mean, after so many laps, I think some of the riders, the mental fatigue becomes something they have to battle as well. Because remember, hitting your marks and then changing those marks throughout the race and adapting in that way when the race line is developing, I mean, that can be mentally very fatiguing. And you also have to remember to breathe. You yeah. Know, you know, when you're trying to hit your marks, you're trying to go wide open, you're trying to get on the throttle at the same time, trying to hit your mm -hmm. marks going into the corner, you have to breathe. Sometimes you have to reach up and, and grab a tear off, you know, and pull that off of your lens and, well, and so you get clear vision. And what we're looking at here too, this, oop, uh -oh. this game just went black. Uh -oh. uh, well, what we're looking at here now is the Daytona short track. There we go. We're looking at here on these short tracks, you're seeing a lot of body language. So I'm going to point, please excuse me. You'll notice riders move further back on the seat. That's to get more rear wheel traction. They'll move forward on the seat. That's to uh, kind of reposition themselves on the bike for the, uh, for the front stretch and the back stretch. And, they're using a lot of body language, and Scotty, you mentioned the mental fatigue, also the physical fatigue. I've talked to riders who have said it is harder to ride this track than it is to ride the Springfield Mile because there is so much body language going on on the bike and the shifting of the weight, and uh, also 
I mean, we talk about grip on the handlebars. You want to right. ride loose, but you also have to ride with enough body language to make sure that if you do get up into that soft stuff, you can steer it back down. So, And, and when you go into the corners, typically on a short track, you slide to the front of the motorcycle to put the weight on that front wheel so you can steer it. Right. When you come off the corner, you slide to the back of the seat. I mean, you just saw Johnny Lewis Johnny do it Lewis, right there. Perfect example. And so you try to get that traction over that rear wheel. So it, we're getting closer to that little thing you were calling contact uh, when we first started this. So keep keep this an eye is, on what's going on. Right. So you're going to want to watch. We're, this is, we're, again, just to reset, we're watching Sammy Halbert's Insta360. And th this is kind of what Sammy Halbert was talking about. He's trying to figure out where Johnny Lewis is at. Johnny Lewis may be losing a little bit of momentum. Sammy Halbert definitely figuring out a new line. And here's what we're talking about. And this was the big hubbub yesterday right here, Scotty, where Sammy Halbert's inching up on Johnny. He's telling him I'm there. He's knocking at the door, maybe even holding some people up behind him. And he's trying, he's really trying to, to find a way to get around Johnny right now, and he just can't figure it out. He's waiting for Johnny to make a mistake, maybe. But, uh, Scotty, break this down for me. So he's, he's closed on him a couple of times. He's getting up here real close. He's actually touched the back tire with, with right there. See, so he just saw Sammy's front tire just barely touch Johnny's tire. He's letting him know he's got, he's got somebody coming, but Johnny's going to do everything he can to hold him off, stay on that perfect line down there on that bottom. And, you know, is he holding him up? I don't know. But Sammy kind of, he's getting impatient. He's tired of following what's going on. So here he comes up the inside one more time. He's going to touch him right about there. They just touch coming off of this corner. They'll go back onto the front straightaway. He's shown him a wheel at least three times A couple now. of times. And he's bumped him just a couple of times. Nothing hard yet. So he's setting him up. He's trying to go higher, a little bit higher going in the corner so he can get the drive off the corner to go up the inside. This is down here in three and four. They'll head back towards the front straightaway. Sammy's right there on the back tire looking for a way through. Every position pays a little bit more money and also pays championship points. Not that Sammy's going for points. He's going for that money. He wants to get up there as far to the front as he can. He closed the front, closed up there on the inside right there, almost made the pass. We're turn three and four. We're getting close, Kristen. I'm wondering if the Insta360 has the footage of Johnny kicking Sammy's bike over after this happens. So mind you to set the scene, guys. All right, here we go. We're getting closing him up one more time. A little tap, another little tap right there. Sammy is all over him right there, just gnawing at him, just trying to trying to show him that somebody's coming. He's trying to trying to rattle Johnny's cage right now, trying to make him make a mistake he's if you can. He's knocking on the door right now. Correct. You can tell the only way that he's going to pass is up the inside. He's not going to go on the outside. He's trying to force Johnny to make a mistake. One more time, he touches his back tire right there with his front. No big deal. It's not really messing either one of them up yet. He didn't hit him hard enough to you know, make Johnny go wide or anything like that. Now Sammy goes in a little bit deeper, trying to square off the corner. This is down the front straightaway here. He's got a good drive up the inside. Here he comes. He saw a spot, went up there, and there was a little bit of a contact right there made, and Johnny Lewis goes down on the ground. But was that contact fair? Um, from <laughs> that, Scotty, I'm putting you on the well, spot. From that point of view, that was... It was he went in there a little bit a little bit too hot and I don't think he left Johnny enough room to hold down that line. So again, it's short track racing. I don't pick sides. Um, right. But, Apologies have been said, though. I did. <laughs> yeah. I, again, I yeah. talked to Sammy and he said today I went on my apology tour. I said sorry to everybody. He said I had at least five people to say sorry to. Right. But he was laughing about it. You know, everyone knows at the short track you can expect aggressive bar to bar racing. And uh, after that, you may have to say I'm sorry to a yeah. few of your friends. Well, you know, short track racing, you don't come here to make friends. You leave your friends at home. You come here to race and you come here to win. Come here to bring home the bacon. Yeah. <laughs> Which if you guys are hoping to do tonight. Yeah. Night number three, which is actually it night number like two. It feels like night number 300. Yeah, it's been a little while <laughs> since we've been here. We watched <laughs> practice night the first night. and If you're a mechanic right now, I mean, having to take these bikes back completely dusted from that uh, really fine Daytona short track sand, and you're having to go through, clean everything up after each heat and moto, especially, you know, the Essence and team does such a good job of that. Mm -hmm. I feel like at this point, I'd be throwing in the rag. Well, when I raced, Kristen, we would take our bike back after Daytona and just take it all the way apart. Even, you know, every little you have bearing. To clean every Piece, and yeah. it, it actually, the sand and the fine stuff that hits your bike, it will actually pit the metal and everything. And, right. and we've actually had rust on our bikes by the time we get back to Oklahoma. So mm -hmm. you have to strip them down, you know, and get serious about really cleaning them and, you know, sometimes even taking the wheels off, cleaning the, 
inside the wheels, the bearings, and all that fun stuff. So it's it's a lot of work, and they've had to do this three days in a row. Right, and you know, I was talking to some of the teams, and overheating was an issue that just a few of the the teams had been kind of struggling with. And I asked if it was because of the sand, and a few, you know, everyone wants to keep their secret secret at least at the first round. Right. But uh, everyone was saying that to kind of combat that, they were trying different settings, they were trying different air filters. But uh, this hasn't been so much of an issue in years past. I'm not sure if it's new bikes, new teams, everyone just kind of figuring things out for themselves this yeah. year. But, and, uh, and when the new bikes come out, you know, it's kind of a, a monkey see, monkey do type deal. If this guy's going fast on this particular bike and he did this to the motorcycle, I tell you what, I got to do if that. If Briar Bauman wins tonight, everyone will have a thumb break. <laughs> everyone, you watch. Well, and then if, in, you know, <laughs> the Essence ends with the holes in the air boxes. So this year, I don't know if we have video of it. Um, yeah. It might be, we might have to wait to see it till later. But uh, this year, the Essence and Racing Yamaha team, mm -hmm. uh, where the air boxes, they drilled holes all throughout the air box to allow more airflow, more ventilation, to create more horsepower. And we're not going to see that so much here. Obviously, this isn't a horsepower track, but right. that... I mean, that could come into play when we get to the miles, the half miles, even on the TTs for the acceleration. And uh, I was joking around. I was like, watch, everyone's going to go be poking holes. And the KTM's air box is further towards the back, right? So they naturally have the little holes there. Right, right. But I could see them now saying, oh, at some point, though, mechanics busy. you don't want to get too much dirt in there either. So it's a it's you got to walk that fine right? line. Exactly. Yeah, so let, let's talk about the track just a little bit, Kristen. They have made some changes before yesterday to three and four. They kind of squared off the middle of that inside of the corner. Well, they did this similar thing down here. This is With turns one, one and two. two. So they've kind of made that a straight line right here so that it, it will open up. Uh, possibly a new passing zone. Also, it will allow more runoff room. If you get in the corner a little bit too hot, there's more distance before you get up into the air fence. So that's the reason for it. And they're just trying to yeah. do something different. And I like it because we don't want to see the same thing two nights in a row no. or three nights in a row. And so what I, growing up in a, in a, kind of more traditional supercross motocross family what i would call that section kind of right here as we're looking on exit of the turn that's t-bone city and that could okay. end up being a really it, uh, that could be a contact zone because what's going to happen is guys who are taking that outside line and kind of allowing the momentum to, to carry drift. them through the turn and mm -hmm. to drift further out there might be someone who says hey i'm gonna i'm gonna dive bomb make, i'm gonna come down the inside kind of make a short shoot out of it right there shoot. you They're know gonna turn, square it, turn it up. early square it off and then yeah. yeah, I can see that happening. We'll have to wait and see. There's Dave McGrath out there trying to make sure that track's clear. And, Scotty, we're seeing some some shadows right now on mm -hmm. track. Does that affect you as a rider at all? No, you don't You don't even think about that. You don't see it at all. Mm -hmm. uh, the only time that could affect you is if maybe there's more water there, if, if that would be like going into a corner and there's more water there. That's on the back straightaway. That's the big scoreboard back there and the, the banner says Daytona Flat Track that – my buddy AJ Eslick was on that on that banner for quite quite a few years, and they've changed it out this year. So I had to send him a picture and said, "Changing of the times." Yeah, and so a uh, side note too to all of our friends who are just over the hill at the Daytona uh, 200 Come earlier on over. today. Come on over, guys! So if you guys are over uh, finishing up things with the Daytona 200, you guys want to come over and watch the American Flat Track race. Uh, we are welcoming you with open arms today. And uh, something that uh, <laughs> earlier today uh, I thought was uh, so cool kind of watching and, mm -hmm. and running into James Rispoli. He is king of the baggers. He won uh, yesterday. And uh, we also were able to interview him the night before our first night at the Daytona 200. But uh, James, king of the baggers, he uh, is a frequenter here in the uh, flat track paddock. James Rispoli. Yeah. yeah. Might have him stop boy and watch what's going on. Stop boy. I, I know he, stop boy. Yeah. Boy, we've got a lot going on in our ears. <laughs> well, right I'm now. thinking about the, I'm thinking about your T Bone City. Like, are we gonna start naming corners like they do in some other motorsports? I, Kristen? I mean, is you know, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you setting a trend right now? I am trademarking T Bone City because that to me is is right here is we we're perfect shot. Coming out of two if you're a rider and you're desperate, I mean, if you were running second place or if you were even in first and you've been suffocated throughout the race by someone in second, I would be so cautious of protecting my inside because someone could just slide up the inside T-Bone City. And I mean, here you don't want to see that happen, obviously, in flat track, but just know that there could be some contact made if you have a rider who behind you may be impatient. Did you happen to stop over at the concession stand or the souvenir stand outside turn number one or two? I have not seen a souvenir stand. Should I, we stop by the souvenir stand? My, my twin brother, Brad, went over there. And he oh. already bought like three shirts over there. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. He got yeah. a really cool blue one. It's got a, a retro picture on it. Don't so. tempt me with a shopping trip here, Scotty. Well, we are. Uh, and now we're seeing the, the concession stand that I was just talking about, too. And now they're going to yeah. start making me hungry. 
listen, we are, <laughs> for everyone who's hanging out with us right now, we are live on Fans Choice. You can also catch us on FS1, but we are in a delay for qualifying. Let's talk about qualifying yesterday. We have the, the practices uh, coming up here. They only get a limited six-lap practice. Not qualifying. This is practice. This is all practice. Qualifying yesterday was determined. We had the the rain delay because of the inclement weather, if you're just joining us back now. Mm -hmm. And uh, qualifying yesterday was already determined. So heats are set. This is just a practice for riders to go out there and shake down the bikes and get a feel for the track. Scotty, is six laps enough to do that? Um, they're already set, you know, pretty much how they like their bikes. Mm -hmm. I think it. I think it's two quick six-lap sessions. I think that's plenty. Even though they did make some drastic changes down there to turn one and two by bringing the inside of the corner in, I, they had the same thing here yesterday in three and four. So I think they're fine as the bikes are rolling onto the racetrack. Bikes on the track. <laughs> Day number 15. That was, that was some delay we had there. There you go. 32, Dallas Daniels will lead him out. He was the winner of the first mm -hmm. night. I think they're coming out according to their point standings. Actually, according to how they finished the first 19 riders, Okay. How they finished in the uh, first round, which was Thursday night. Dallas Daniels took the, the win. That's his first short track win in the Premier Class. Scotty, I asked Nick, did you expect Dallas to come out and have such a dominant showing in the first round of the season? He said, listen, I have a few tracks on our Ooh. schedule. Ooh, yeah, a little fishtail there uh, that I have circled that we know Dallas is going to be a factor in. Daytona short track was not one that we expected. I, I didn't either. You know, I, I know the Yamahas have been stronger on the bigger tracks. And, of course, Dallas rides really strong on a TT. So does J.D. Beach. But um, for, to come out here onto this particular racetrack, um, this is a replay of Dallas going down here and turns one and two. He gets a handful right here in the back end, just about steps out and almost walks all the way around on him. Mm -hmm. And he has to let that throttle. You can't chop that throttle right there. You high sided, but he did an excellent job and took a look over his shoulder. Didn't want to get hit right with somebody from behind. So, uh, and kick. who's right behind him there is, uh, the the big, the big three, right? The big three, Briar Bauman, who, uh, had such a incredible incredible debut for being on a bike that he had told me at media day he only had a couple hours on yeah, that's incredible. relatively unproven relatively untested and uh, he also got into uh, had some contact with the riders actually broke his broke brake pedal off but he was able to continue on after the restart he does have a thumb brake which i think he might be the only one in the paddock that actually has a thumb brake and and uh, Dave McGrath, our tech official, checked that before they sent him back out. He was able to continue racing because he did have a brake. Right. Of course, there's no front brakes on the flat track machines until we get to the TTs. Is it just me or did Dallas Daniels just uh, put... Yeah, he did, actually, going back to where positioning we were in focal point. There's Davis Fish right there. You can really see him slide forward on the seat right there, Chris. And again, putting the weight and the and everything on that front wheel so he can steer it into the corner. Then he slides to the back of the seat. He'll slide right back to the front of the seat. Now he's taking a look over his shoulder, so I think he's maybe wanting to let off and maybe see if he has anybody chase him down And because uh, he's catching and up to two guys in front of him. And all that body language, Scotty, can be so exhaustive for these right. riders. But again, only six laps during this practice session. Dallas Daniels at the top. B-Rob just bumped into second with J.D. Beach in third right now. And 18.492, so the track is very close to the same times we've had the last couple of days. I mean, it, they can't do very much to change that. Uh, again, they're going to continue watering the racetrack uh, after we get done. There, well, after we've done this first session, they'll take a look at the racetrack. Big P's going to make sure he gets those big rocks off the racetrack. But that was uh, group number one of your Super Twins. That's the Mission Super Twins. Dallas Daniels is the top spot, 18.492. Robinson is second, J.D. Beach third, Davis Fisher fourth, and Johnny Lewis is fifth. And there, Mikey Rush on the Harley Davidson, the 15, we just saw there. And uh, Mikey Rush, it's so great to see him back in the series with the team he was racing, racing with last year. And uh, his story, when you think about it, he is just so resilient. Yeah, he, he's a fighter. He doesn't want to give up yet. This is his passion. He's been doing it his whole life. He's almost walked away from the sport a couple different times after a few different crashes and and from you know his crash at the Charlotte half mile, breaking his lower tib and fib down there by his ankle. We talked about it underneath the mission tent, and uh, you know he's, he's trying not to use it as much as he, as much as he can. But of course, when you hear sliding on a short track, you can see him right there. He's barely keeping that foot just barely above the ground. He's re really using it up in the air to get that moving weight, moving moving mass back to the back of the motorcycle. So here's another look at the 15 as. He slides in deep into three. He's barely dabbing that foot right now. So there must be, it doesn't look like it to me, but it looks like there's plenty of traction, at least for Mikey Rush. He's not even putting that foot down very much. No, and 
even when you watch him walk throughout the paddock, you can tell that he's uncomfortable and looking now to Kobe Carlisle, who uh, made a team transition this offseason. He is now with the team that won Corey Texter, his production twins championships. And, you know, I was talking to uh, Kobe Carlisle after who, after uh, the who we're on right now, by the way, who just nicked Mikey Rush, Scotty. Uh -oh. uh, Mikey Rush on the ground there. Don't know what happened. I mean, we can get a replay of that. And it, oh, spilling a... Looks like radiator fluid. Yeah, a little bit of radiator fluid there. He's trying, trying to get out of the way. Kept the bike going. He sits on its side saddle, and he'll try to get out of harm's way. We try not to stop the, the practice and qualify, or this is just practice, but we try to keep it going. But uh, Rush's side saddle, he'll climb back on board. His handlebars are definitely bent there. You can see him, they're turned Let's to the left. Let's take a look at what's going on here. We have Kobe Carlisle coming up the inside. Oh, the and back. Back end just came around on him, just like what almost happened to the 32. Wow. But oh notice my. where he was. Yeah, that is not ideal. But notice oh. where he was at. This was the line that he was taking. And it's, I mean, Watch let's this. get it again from this angle. Again, Colby does an excellent job lifting up his foot so his uh, foot doesn't get crushed in between the two motorcycles right there. Colby's but, reaction skill. And I man. mean, Mikey Rush, very uh, fortunate there to both be able to get back on the bike. Are, actually, both of them are very fortunate. Hopefully neither one of those bikes are hurt too bad. So Scotty, what's yep. happening out there? As you can tell, when we looked at the, the way the track was uh, kind of sifting between the two lines, are guys moving further up the track? Is that's what yes. is that's what's it's happening? Just like Lima, I'm not going to say that this is Lima, but it's it's happening what's similar to Lima. They brush off the loose stuff. It brushes up to the higher stuff, so it gets deeper and deeper. Uh, now the guys are actually going up there. I, I would kind of act like this is a sprint car race they're up there they've dusted off the bottom now they're up there kind of pushing the cushion is what they say up against the edge of the deep stuff you don't want to go in there where it's too deep because it, it will definitely slow you down and we just talked about how quick that practice session was i mean I, to get a gauge of where this track is for someone like mikey rush to to have an error like that so early in the session i think guys are maybe surprised right now with the way the track has yeah, trended the, the track is definitely different than we've seen so far and again this track daytona is always a crapshoot it always tracks. changes in every one. time every time you go out there you got to be prepared for everything so the singles class is coming to the racetrack again we've already narrowed the, the singles class down to 32 riders we had 43 at the start of yesterday so some of the riders have already loaded up and and i don't know if they'd stick around or they might be heading on down the road so it depends on each rider's particular situation as we look at cop that bike has been planted all week long. I'm going to say week because we started on Wednesday. So that bike just doesn't move around a lot on them. It stays right there underneath them. It doesn't step out from underneath them. It doesn't bounce up and down on the braking bumps. Uh, Dalton Goatee, I talked to him last night. He's ready to win this place. He loves this track. He's on his new team with Robbie Bobby. And... Uh, they're ready to take the victory. He wasn't set. He wasn't happy with second place. No, he wasn't. He is still looking for a little bit more. The Daytona short track is actually where he won his first Grand National Correct. back in 2016. So he's got good vibes here. But getting back to uh, Cody Cop there, this is a brand new 2023 KTM. It's a little bit wider, and the riders have been figuring out the dynamics of this bike. The rider to figure it out best has clearly been Cody Cop. Dalton Gautier is on a similar bike, so is his teammate Max Whale. Uh, all these riders kind of figuring out the, the new model bikes and Max Whale a little off the pace there. Yeah, I don't know if he sat back and waited and he wants to ride with. No, he's, he's way off the pace. So something happened to Max on that first opening lap or something. But uh, yeah, so earlier in the week at a, at a non-American flat track race, Cody Cop was struggling a little bit. Max Whale took, took two victories. So uh, maybe it's just the, the way they're getting dialed in on, on each different kind of racetrack possibly. Yeah, and I mean, Ch uh, Trevor Bruner, sorry, and Tom Drain to the top of the charts right now in practice. And again, this is just practice. They'll go off of yesterday's qualifying times. Oh, but man. both Yamahas, uh, Trevor Bruner's uh, crew, crew chief, Nick Daniels was telling me they're not making a whole lot of adjustments. They oh, that's just, that's Tom Drain, I think, right behind yeah. the 18. He's got his hands full. If we can try to pan back, maybe to the right. There he is. He's been all over the motorcycle. The man might actually. I don't know. It's one of the. It's the 59. It's Tom Drain. Okay. So he's been all over that motorcycle. I've caught a couple of glimpses of him, but he's riding behind his Australian buddy right there. But. That, that was actually a smooth turn one and two for the 59. So I look at how far up the track they are on yeah. the on the back stretch and, there. And that's something that's a good point, Kristen, because they're doing it on the front straightaway as well. In years past, we couldn't get up to the wall. There was about a foot or 18 inches that was grass between the racetrack and the wall. This year they've taken that away. But the crazy thing is that's actually uh, some dirt that's never been raced on before. So it might be a little bit different.
And uh, we are so excited because the, the pro is here. Roger, <laughs> <laughs> Roger Hayden is going to actually step in here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and step out, Scotty, so I'll let you right. kind of cover what's well, happening right push now. Push that button real quick and, and hope everybody on your Instagram Live enjoyed what was going on. So Kristen Beat's going to step outside. Roger Lee Hayden's going to come on inside and watch some practice here round at number two, our group number two here, round number one of practice for your AFT singles class. They're onto the racetrack right now. Here they come. There is the 91, Justin Jones. He's been fast all weekend, just hasn't quite made it to the front of the pack. He's on that number 91. He's from Holling, New York. Also out there is the 62, Dan Bromley, the 24, Hunter Bauer, 26, Aiden Roos Evans. There's the 49 of Chad Coase. Sorry about that. We're just switching things out up here in the booth. There is the 91, Justin Jones. This is our second group here of our AFT singles class. We've already narrowed the field down to the fastest 32. So we'll have two rounds of practice here today. And the 62 is going up the inside on that number 24. Hunter Bauer slips a little wide. Here comes the 26, Aiden Rusevin. So, uh, Roger. You just came from over the banks, man. How's the road? How'd the, how'd the road race go? It was good. It was really exciting over there. The Daytona 200 came down to six or seven guys drafting there at the end. So uh, it was really exciting, but I'm happy to be here and uh, see some good racing again tonight. Well, thanks for filling in. Ralph Shaheen had to go on down the road to a car race, so it opened up the door for you to step in here and be with us. Have you raced at this particular racetrack before? Not at this one. I, at the old stadium, Muni uh, municipal. I raced there, but yep. never, uh, never this one. But uh, I like this track. I like it being close to the speedway. It makes it easy for, for more people to get here and, and watch. The other night, the crowd was really big here, and it was cool to see. Yeah, it is cool to be just outside the Super Speedway, and, and hopefully we'll attract some new fans that maybe are road race fans or car fans or you know, or even just the bikers driving down there on Main Street. Yeah, usually all it takes for flat track is somebody to see it once exactly. and then they're hooked. So just as many eyeballs as you can get, and uh, it's been uh, been fun to watch. There's the 49 Chad Coast. They, the first impressions team switches on over to Husqvarna at the start of the year. And there's 62 Dan Bromley, who's doing a, a part-time schedule. He's riding both classes this weekend. Have you ever rode a single and a twin at a Grand National at the same day? No, not a Grand National. Right. I haven't, but, uh, I mean, it's got to be really hard just because of the power difference and then possibly using different gears on different bikes. So you gotta you got to adjust really quick. Yeah, and, and there's not a lot of time, you know, to jump off the twin and jump on the single and hand the one bike over to your mechanic, go back there, try to make some changes. But uh, Dan Bromley's trying to get that done here this weekend. And like I said, he's just doing select events, which whichever ones they pick and choose. So we'll see him and. We'll actually try to see which one he's going to focus in on as well. Is he going to try to focus on that single when we leave here or the twin or maybe keep riding both? I don't know. There is Shana, Shana Texter Bauman. Here we are coming to the booth. That's Shana Texter Bauman leading them on out. Kind of playing bumper cars. That's Roger <laughs> Hayden right here. Number 95. I'll always remember he's 95. Is that your favorite number? How'd you get that number? Yeah, that was my favorite number growing up. I seen it on uh, actually Anthony Gober's bike one time, and I thought it thought it looked good. And uh, when I got good enough to, to get a two-digit number, I picked 95 and got to use it my whole career. So you said you never raced at this racetrack before, but you raced at Municipal. Uh, does this track compare to Municipal at all, other than the same color of the dirt? I think just uh, a little bit because of the, the way the dirt is and also our grooves, but I think the other track is definitely a little bit bigger, maybe uh, maybe easier to pass. This track here, you really have to set up your passes really early, looks like, and get a get a good job. But I think the dirt and the you know the, the groove and stuff is pretty close to the same. Shane Texter Bauman out there on the brand new Rick wear racing parts plus bike on that ktm and they put that together at the last minute and, and she's down here on the 52 she was in a transfer spot on the first night and and right when the red flag was coming out for a, a an incident she also had electrical problems and the computer was actually telling that the bike was running cold and was shooting too much fuel in it, and the bike kind of just pretty much shut off so it looks like they've got that fixed and she's trying to work herself into that main event yeah, that's a good thing about having two races on one weekend. You know, if you have one bad race, and for her to be in the transfer spot, at least she knows that she's fast enough to, to get in the main. It just can't have the problem. Yep, so we, we've changed the format too, Roger, back to heat races and a last chance qualifier. Also, we have the, the dash in there, the challenge race. So 
Um, you know, the last few seasons we've gone straight from a heat to a main event. So you got one more chance here, a last chance qualifier. Nobody wants to run that extra race. You want to go straight from the heat race to the main event. Yeah, but I, I like it. It gives more guys an opportunity if they do have an issue to, to make the race. And then also on the race weekend, it just adds a couple more races. Those uh, those last chance qualifiers are some of the most exciting races. People laying it all out there trying to <laughs> trying to get in the main event. Well, the other night on Thursday night, we had 20 bikes on the racetrack and only the fastest six go. And so, again, there's carnage everywhere. There's They're not very long races, so you got to get a good start and get out front. There's Tyler Raggio right there, California rider, now lives in Georgia on that number 55. On the Rackley Racing Yamaha. Actually, Maxwell the other night came from the... Yep, he, he fell off in the heat race, and then he fell off on the first lap of that uh, last chance qualifier and got the last transfer spot. So uh, it is a good deal. Like, if you have an incident, you fall off, or even if you stall your yep. bike, you know, or or somebody crashes in front of you, run them over, or, or anything can happen. So having that last chance qualifier, I think, is a, a big deal for us. So Cody Cop still fastest in this uh, practice session here, 18.133. Trevor Bruner second. Actually, actually both the Estens and Yamahas. Trevor Bruner second. Tom Drain third. Chase Sadoff on the Turner Honda back there fourth. And Travis Petten, he's been fast all weekend, but he had a couple of incidences that, you know, on that first night and actually touched the ground about three different times. But, uh, you know, maybe that's pressure getting to a rookie you know, but uh, he's he's been impressive so far. I was watching him on the test day on Wednesday, and I was asking who that was because I thought he was really quick inside mm -hmm. the top five a lot. So, you know, just the first race is a you know, and Daytona is, is added pressure as well. Just at the you know the prestige of the event. So, hopefully, he get that uh, get that sorted, and tonight he can clean up those mistakes. Yeah, get those jitters shaken away. So there is uh, Landon Smith from Pensacola, Florida. That's actually Dalton Gauthier's teammate on the D and D cycles, and there's behind him is the 38 Tanner Dean. So we take a look back through the field there's 99 stallings there is gary burt whistle from england he's english champion over there overseas we'll go back out in front 117. it sounded like to me when i was outside raj that these guys are hitting the rev limiter almost off the corner is that are you surprised at that i think you know back in the day you'd, you'd run it further down the straightaway before you want to hit the rev limiter yeah i remember like way down the straightaway that's when you would hit it but i was noticing the other day and even the other night watching the race right out of the corner there they're on the rev limiter and uh you know i guess there's there's a reason why i guess so they don't go too fast down the straightaway possibly and be able to slow down for the corner but it's uh it's pretty interesting to watch because it's new it's like a new style yeah and, and they said i was talking to a few of the riders and they told me that the bike actually continues to pull even though you're on the rev limiter it still pulls but i remember the old rotax days when you hit the rev limiter you better it shut that over. thing off and because it ain't gonna it will stop pulling at that point so you know the bikes change technology changes and uh you know, I was used to the back pressure when you go in the corner. I'm sure you were, you were too on a, on a bigger 600 or something like that. But still, the back pressure on these 450s helps you slow down for the corner. Yeah, and I actually noticed a couple guys the other night shifting in the 450 class. So I think some guys got different different ideas of what they think is going to be the best way to get around. There's the kid, Logan McGrain, on that 66. He's racing for the World Championship Ice Racing title this year. And that's Kevin Stallings, the freak of nature right there on the 99 from Indianapolis, Indiana. There's Gerard Bayo on the 317, the Spanish flat track champion. Raj, we have riders from six different countries racing, racing with us just in the singles class. Yeah, it's great to see. I mean, even in all the classes in flat track, so, you know, it's interesting to see so many. You used to really never seen too many Europeans or people from other countries racing flat track, and now it's, uh, you know, it's pretty, a pretty known thing. Yeah, they all want to come over here and see where they stack up. That's where Burt Whistle, he's uh, got some help from Jeffrey Carvin, the Happy Trails Racing, the 111, who's already been out there. Uh, I talked to him last year, and he said he wanted to see where he stacked up against the Americans when the Daytona Flat Track came out on the schedule. He said, I'm coming on over, and he got a hold of Jeffrey Carver, and they made it happen. So he wants to see just before he retires where he stacks up. There's one of your buddies right there, yeah. Lesson, in uh, colored. That was my hero growing up. Mine, too. All right, we're getting a, a question coming in from the truck, Raj. Yeah, so here, here's the question. So we all know that the Haydens all love flat track. So and all three three of the boys raced. Your sisters raced. I remember remember she was fast, too. Uh, Jenny was. But did you all have the same hero growing up or is everybody different? I think everybody was different for me. I definitely I don't really remember about the others, but I was definitely a, a Ronnie Jones fan. I remember going to the, the Indy Mile and getting his number plate. I remember when he was little and he used to run the, the number plate on the basketball. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I was running the number 16 uh, number play with my bicycle and I was cruising the neighborhood. So that was uh, that was my guy. And a quick story, when I was on a PW50 one time, I crashed and uh, broke my shoulder the night before a, a pro race. And the next night, he was there and we were waiting in line getting the pits and told him about it. And he actually came in our, our rig and watched the, the video. Of you crashing? Yeah, and, and for a, you know, a, a young kid to, to see that, it was really... Uh, it meant a lot to me, and I think it set an example of, you know, take care of the young ones when they come up, and that meant a lot. So why did you pick Ronnie Jones? I'm not – I can't tell you. I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, he was he was my guy. I got the new shirt every year. We used to come here for, for bike mm-hmm. week, the amateur races, and we get the new shirt every year. So – what I always liked about Ronnie is his style. Like, if you look at pictures of Ronnie, going in the corners, his style is the same lap after lap. And that guy always hits his mark. And he raced against the best of the best and, and won 10 Grand Nationals. He's actually won the Daytona Short Track yeah, before. Yeah, he won a lot. Yep. I mean, he's still fast today. Yeah. And he's, won, he's made a main event in, in now six different decades, Rod. It was kind of cool whenever I came back and did a couple races a few years ago. Uh, I got to race with him. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, that was pretty cool for me. That's a, yeah. Who, did did you let him win? No, I can't remember now. <laughs> now, <laughs> if I can't remember, then he probably beat me. <laughs> yeah, that's how it goes, right? It looks like he's trying that little bit lower line. One bike's down there in the air fence, down there in three and four. We keep racing until we see a red or checkered here in flat track, but the white flag is out. Did you ever race a bull taco? Never. Why not? I haven't. Well, I'm not that old yet. I'm getting <laughs> old, but I'm not that old yet. I'm not that old either, but the bull tacos are fun to ride. I would like to ride one on top. All right. I'm sure Ronnie Jones could let you ride that one. Two strokes. 19.615. Ronnie Jones at the top spot right now. The Dominic Bolak from Canada. He's number 30. He's up there second quick. Garth Brow is third on the number 15. Charlie Roberts is fourth quick on the number 64. And Jackie Mitchell is fifth quick. So uh, they get two rounds of practice just like the other two classes. All right, they said we're going to go straight into the Super Twins next round of practice. Again, two quick rounds of practice. Opening ceremonies is scheduled for 6 p.m. We'll start racing as soon as opening ceremonies is done, about 6.25 or so, right around there. So they'll clear off the carnage from the Boltaco Astros and get set to go with uh, this final round of practice here. I guess we're listed here as practice round number eight. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've never, I don't think I've ever practiced that much in my life. Wow. <laughs> So uh, some of the Bull Taco guys looks like some of them had to head on back home. So or they're saving their motorcycles maybe for later on. So uh, we didn't see Charlie Williams, Chris Boone, Lance Jones, Lucian Marino, or Rob Bob McClendon to not make it out. So maybe they're waiting until main event time. Robbie might be busy. He definitely is busy. He has two riders out there in that D and D cycles team as we roll back into the Mission Super Twins class. The Double D Dallas Daniels will lead him in the first corner. You you you're good friends with them. Obviously you have your Essence Racing shirt on. You've been watching this kid grow up. How impressed are you? I mean, really impressed. Just the, the po- not only just the talent and the speed aspect of it, but, you know, just the poise and his race craft at such a young age is, uh, you know, some people have that it factor when they're young, and, and he definitely has it. Yeah, he won his first career short track yeah. two nights ago. And, you know, one of the personally, one of the best things about it is he's still a good kid. You know, some young guys, they get a little success and then, you know, the head swells up, and he's kind of been the same ever since. So hopefully he stays on that track, and, uh, you know, he's got a bright future ahead. Do you think he will stay in flat track? I mean, there's, you know, everybody seemed to back, like, even in your day, you grow up racing flat track, you get good at flat track, and then a road race team will pick you up or you'll try to go because if you can control the slide and flat track, it, it works good to, to move on over to, to road racing. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. He would probably have to get a test first to, just to see because he's been out of it a couple of years, but it's a little bit different now. He hasn't road raced really in, in a couple of years, so it would be hard to it'd be hard to say, but I think if he did go road, I think he would be fast at anything he did. I mean, he just has that much talent, and he'd be fast on a road race bike, but he has a great deal here with the, the Estetson team, and uh, not sure why he would ever want to leave that. Yeah, I wouldn't either, but I was just kind of wanting your opinion on that. But he told me when he was a little kid, you know, probably, what, six years ago now already. But I said, what's your goal? He said, I want to break every one of Scotty Parker's records. He has a chance. <laughs> he definitely does. But that's a, that's that's a, big, that's a big tail cast. right there. Yeah, that's a big cast at hand. How about the 44? Brandon Robinson was leading the main event the other night, and Dallas got by him and, 
and he he stayed solid right there in second. Yeah, I mean he's been fast all week to this. Every time you come to Daytona, you know Braden's going to be tough to beat, and he has been this weekend so far. You know, winning his heat the other night, so I think that it's going to go through him again. I think he's going to be one of the guys these guys are going to have to beat. And look who's right behind him on that Royal infield, making the move up here to the Super Twins class. Johnny Lewis, uh, he was kind of my wild card coming in, and and he was up there for quite a while the other night. Yeah, he was he was quick. It's really cool to see all the different brands up, you know, in flat track. So many different brands, uh, you know, represented it, and, and even at the front. So he was he was rolling pretty good. He made it into that. Uh, challenge race the mission challenge and that we had four brands in that challenge race and that's pretty cool to see just like you were talking about raj so uh that was group number one fastest in this round of practice again no surprise the 32 dallas daniels won 8.535 robinson was second johnny lewis third jd beach fourth and briar bauman another one i want to talk to you about a little bit he wasn't on the camera so we weren't talking about him but a brand new team and and to come out out of here with a podium what do you think about that it's pretty impressive i think that's probably more than they expected with the the you know, just jumping on the KTM. And then I think for him and that team, they're just going to get stronger as the year goes, as they get more, you know, more tracks, more riding, and, and just get to try more things on the bike. So I don't know if you saw it, but uh, earlier in the first round, Mikey Rush went down on the Harley right in the middle of one and two, and Col Colby had nowhere to go and just hit Mikey's bike. Luckily, Colby didn't go down. Luckily, it doesn't look like anybody's hurt, but uh, Colby Carlisle, you know, he had a bad injury last year at the I-70 racetrack. He sat out for a little bit. He was in the booth with me for a little while, and and now he's on the racetrack, and he's on the g, &G Racing Yamaha. Yeah, he had a couple years with, with some big injuries, so it's quite good to see him back. And then also on a good team. I mean, they won a couple titles in the production class, so mm -hmm. they definitely uh, know what they're doing. And, and uh, Kobe's a, a, a fast kid, so I think he had a pretty good start to the other night. He has to, you know, something good to build on. Definitely. Has good opportunity right here. He said uh, had maybe one other offer, a couple of – look – looking over a couple different offers and he went with this team because he knows it's a proven team and there's no pressure to go out there and win he's going out there to have some fun here's another guy i want to talk about the 109 that's billy ross he won the laconia short track last year in the production twins class he's on the g-o-m-r team grumpy old man <laughs> going racing and uh this auto.com russ briggs johnny goat the crew chief on that thing yeah johnny goat he's uh and he's one of the best crew chiefs ever in flat track. So that was cool to see him win that race last year at, at Laconia. Yeah, now he's getting an opportunity to ride in Indian. And, and right off the bat on the first practice day, he had issues with one of the bikes and got that all sorted out. Now we'll take a look back at the 20 bike. They call him Captain Chaos. I don't know if I like that nickname or not, but uh, the 20 bike, Jared Vandekoy, he got up into the air fence last uh, on, on Thursday night and wasn't happy with his results. He's well, looking he had, to, he had a to little rebound. Bit of, he had a little bit of help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> we know what we're talking about. But yeah, he he had some contact with another rider, got in the air fence, and then by the time he got up, got back on the bike, he was quite a bit, quite a ways back behind. So it's hard to play catch up on a short track like this. It is, but he finished last year. I mean, really strong. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was one of the guys to beat every week. So if he can carry that over to the beginning of the year, correct, he could be a, he could be a tough guy. Well, he won his first Grand National at the end of the last yep. season at the next to the last roundup, just down the road at Volusia over there on Highway 40. Like his new leather, it's all white get up. Definitely easy to see out there on the racetrack. Up there in the 12th spot right now, so he's got to find a little bit more speed, but he's also out there in a lot of traffic. So uh, maybe when he's got a little bit cleaner racetrack, maybe he can march his way towards the front as we look through the field coming across the start finish line right here. Checkered flag is out. That was group number two. There is Van Decoy from Ohio. Bought himself a house at the end of the last season, kind of settled in. Ohio looks like he likes it there. He's going to continue to be from there. Looks like we'll go on over to the Parts Unlimited AFT single sponsored by Kicker getting ready to roll onto the racetrack and the, the one bike will lead him out. And I've been saying that that bike has been on rails. It's it's planted. It's not moving around on him. And, and Cody doesn't seem like he's moving around on the bike that much either. No, and, and Cody doesn't ever put a wheel wrong. I mean, it's just impressive watching him, you know, the other night, how he can get on the throttle so much sooner than, than a lot of the other guys. And, and you know, have the rear end step out just a little bit, but not too much. Never, you know, a lot of guys, you see, they, it steps out and they have to let off a little bit to get back in line, and he just somehow uh -huh. keeps it. I this? jinxed him. I said he never well, makes a mistake. I'm pretty sure he did it on purpose. He looked back down there and wanted to. He wants to let Trevor Bruner go on by. He's not going to show him any secrets just yet. So instead, now he'll become the chaser instead of the chasee. Well, he really hasn't been behind anybody. No, not, not all weekend, yeah. not since Wednesday. So Trevor Bruner. 
about halfway through the year, he really turned it on last season. Yeah, switching to the Yamaha, a different, little different riding style, and I think for him, just had to kind of get comfortable and figure out what's the limit on the Yamaha up the track. And I mm -hmm. think that by the mid-season, he really found it and, uh, you know, got came on really strong. And then starting the season at the podium, he's got to be pretty happy with that. Yeah, try, they're trying this new line down here in three and four. They did it... Uh, earlier in in the week but now they've kind of squared off the inside of turns one and two but there looks like they're taking a lot shorter way around down here in three and four yeah you can see they're kind of going in a little bit earlier but they're still drifting up i feel like a little more than the other night yeah. the other night they were all kind of riding around the bottom and it seems like they're going in low like they did the other night but letting it drift up a little bit and bruner drifted up quite a bit right there cody cop still not able to capitalize though and and before you got into the booth i was explaining to the race fans that used to there's about 18 inches of grass between the front straightaway and the wall and the back straightaway and the wall now we're pushed all the way up against the wall do you remember that yeah i do and it's cool about this what i like about the track tonight as well the other night when somebody slipped up where they where they're right now mm -hmm. they would lose a lot of spots oh yeah they would go straight backwards so i think with the track the way it is it might be able to present more opportunities for guys to pass and they will do some track maintenance after we get done with our second round of practice for all three classes before we get into opening ceremonies and again opening ceremonies at six o'clock eastern time depending on where you're at that's what's ahead of us opening ceremonies and then into our heat races all right, so we just got an update. So opening ceremony will be at 6:10. So that will give the the track crew some time to go out there and work on the racetrack. Here's Chase Sadoff up there. The 88 just went by the line. He's the fastest in this round of practice. This is his second season, and he's with the Turner Racing Honda team. He wanted Ronnie Jones' number. He wanted that 16, but somebody already had it. So he went with 88. I said, why 88? He's 8 plus 8, 16. <laughs> Well, Whatever works, right? Anything looks good when you're in the top spot. <laughs> I agree. He could be number yeah. 309, three 5,000. It doesn't matter. No, I'm just kidding. So, sat off at the top spot. I think that's the first time he's been on top of the leaderboard in the, in the last two days of racing. 18.341. So, even though the track is different, the times are relatively close to the same. I mean, all the guys are, are really close when you look at the, the lap times. Mm -hmm. Especially the top five so far. Sadoff, Kopp, Bruner, Dalton Gauthier, and Tom Drain in that fifth position. Here is group number two, the 91. Again, we've been talking about him a lot because he's been leading group number two several times. It's Justin Jones. He's a little bit bigger guy, and is, is being big like that an advantage on a short track? I think it probably helps getting, uh, you know, getting some traction, getting some more weight on the back. I was actually here a couple years ago when he won the singles class going mm -hmm. away, so definitely right. a track he's uh, really fast at. And, and kind of like taller riders seem to do well here as well. Brandon Robinson, Cody Cobb, both two of our taller riders right behind the Justin Jones, the 62 of Dan Bromley as we take a look at the replay down the back shoot. Look at the bike really dancing kind of right about here. It starts hopping just a little bit. You can see him try to turn the front tire there. He's trying to scrub a little bit of speed, but with the bumps, it's making it a little bit difficult. Okay, so how important it is, I mean, they all have to run basically the same Dunlop tire. So how important is it to, to get that air pressure right? Well, really important. It means a lot for these guys. And also, I mean, it's just the, the thing is, there's not like a magical number. Everybody has something different that, that they like. And you just have to figure that out. And you can't go too low because that will twist that tire on the, on the rim, right? Yeah. Don't yeah, if you go too low, you'll see guys that try that and they end up getting flat. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Maxwell in the 18th spot. We're taking a look through the field. Eight, the 26, Aiden Rusevens has moved himself up to the 11th spot. And he's got Steve Beatty helping him out. So the 26 helping out, the former 26 helping out the new 26. Yeah, it's a good guy to have in your corner, Steve Beatty. I remember watching him race. He was uh, national number 26. Mm -hmm. He's helping out Aiden Rusevens, who was also running the 26. There's Patton on the 82. He's been fast throughout the weekend. Right now, he's currently eighth in this practice session. There's the 133, Clark Morian. He's a guy that we didn't hear much of coming through the ranks, but he got the Nikki Hayden Horizon Award in flat track last season. Yeah, and it's great to see him, you know, be able to make this jump this season. And, uh, you know, first year is, is, you know, riding the pro single or the singles class. It's going to be difficult, I think, for a lot of young riders who, like, win that award. Mm -hmm. They come in with a lot of pressure on themselves because they feel like they have to perform right away. Right. How hard is it, Raj? It's been quite a while since you went from amateur ranks to pro, but it's it's a big step. It's huge. It, it's hard to explain. I mean, it's almost like college to, you know, pro. Or yeah. even like high school to college. And then, you know, singles classes, the next jump is like going to, to pro. I mean, it's really hard because 
as an amateur, there's you're usually you know the good ones are the fastest every weekend, or, or there's two of you. Then you come to the singles class, and then there's thirty of you just right. as fast. Right, and it's the best of the best. And and now we got, like we said earlier, six different countries being represented just in the singles class. So it's the best of the best. And now we can almost start saying it's the best and the best in the world. Yeah, look look at those ruts right here. This is the front straightaway, so it looks like maybe when they start digging on the track, maybe that uh, new Texas rake or Harley rake maybe went a little deep right there. Yeah, and then you can see it in the back there as well. So it's just another uh, another thing the riders are going to have to keep up with the, the track because it's going to be changing and, all night. And you can feel those when you're on the bike, right? Yeah, and then also when they go in the corners, you can see how much their bikes are moving around. So it's a totally different track than, than the other night. You might try to, you know, use the last – the other night set up but tonight it's a totally different place it's way to sift up the suspension make it make the rebound faster i, I mean do you have any secrets do you i don't have, any have any hints? secrets i don't either i mean like i'm 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 scra scratching my head right now trying to figure out what what would what would you do there's the 51 got a new ride this off season he's riding for the big r honda team and and he was actually charging really hard through that semifinal. went all the way around the outside in that last chance qualifier almost, almost made it past max to the start finish line but came up just about two inches short yeah i thought he was gonna have it i, I did know. too and he started that down here in turns one and two tried the high line got a run went down here high in three and four and just about made it happen so uh, what he needs to do tonight is finish the top six yeah. spots in the heat race. Now he have to worry about that last chance qualifier. And he was really the, the first guy who started using the high line. Yes. A lot of guys seen that happening, and then they started doing the same thing. And, and even in the hooligan class, that uh, second place rider went to the high line and made the pass around the outside. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll say he's the trendsetter of the other night. How about that? Zabal up there in the ninth spot right here on this 51. Try and slide some of these other riders back. Some fast guys and gals are back there. Shayna Texter Bauman for you. Shayna fans, she's in the 21st spot, which is a, a good solid run here so far. Again, this is just another round of practice, so it's not even a qualifying race or a qualifying time, but uh, we'll see where you stack, stack up against everybody else. And also Ashton Yates, 24th, the fellow road and, racer. And so he, he just raced over there, right? No, not this week. Okay, He's doing man. super bike, I believe. I, I thought he was racing over there, no. too, and I was like, how is he going to double dip? But, uh, yeah, so he's up here. Ashton Yates right there in the 24th spot. There's Shane Texter Bauman on the 52. Parts Plus, KTM. You know who's helping her out? Jake Johnson. Yeah, I've seen that. The That's other pretty night. cool, huh? Did you race against Jake very much? A little bit, not a ton, but when I did a couple, uh, you know, a couple years ago, I raced against him there. You know, we were both in the Essence team. But yep. Talk about a guy that knows how to get around Daytona. <sighs> he had to figure it out. Checkered flag is out here in this group of AFT singles riders. And there goes 55 of Raggio. His uh, dad got third in the hooligan class the other night on Thursday. Seems like a long time ago, <laughs> right? How long have you been down here? Uh, just since Wednesday. Did you get to did you go downtown at all? Did you, no, you I ride? Been. You have a bike to ride? No. Don't do that no a more. Car. Just a car, huh? Less trouble? That's right. <laughs> no, not less trouble. I got a flat the other night, so it was oh, a little no. bit of trouble. All right. Here comes another group of bikes. Looks like one more group of AFT singles. We already had uh, 43 bikes. We've narrowed it down to the fastest 32 before we start tonight. So, you know, some of the riders are already headed on home. That's hard to do. Yeah, you know, tough come here to, you know, put all it into it and then not uh, go home early. But you know what? It just gives you something to shoot for for next year. Yeah, the rider from uh, the Czech Republic got 34th fast time the first night and then 33rd before we rained out yesterday. So he's got to sit and watch or head on back overseas. It's, it's a tough, tough road out here. There's Landon Smith from Pensacola, Florida. Got helped by Robbie Bobby and Dalton Gautier, his teammate. Robbie Bobby, the team manager. Has to help him so much having a fast teammate. Definitely. They have something to, to, to go off of and to maybe set the bike up similar. If, I don't even know. Maybe they have two different riding styles, but you at least have a place to start and you have somebody to talk to that's yeah. won here before. And just to ask questions, you know, as a young guy, the, the experience that Dalton has, he can go there and, you know, ask any question he, he has and probably help him out. Yeah. He looks pretty smooth. Currently in the 28th spot, Landon Smith again. Looks could be deceiving. He's out front. He hasn't been passed yet, but he's sitting here 28th. And that just changed just as we just started talking about it. He just moved off the leaderboard. Looks like he's down there 29th now. So 
take a look at the replay of some corner action on the 117, Landon Smith. And he's just uh, freshly off a broken collarbone. Back in starts coming around. And that left foot goes backwards a little bit. Yeah, not quite full lock to lock like Lima. A little bit more than he would like. Though. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you're sideways like that, you're not going forward. Saddle still at the top spot. Nobody else has got up there close. Uh, Sabala and one of the later groups got up to ninth. Check a flag out for the 117. What I have noticed is they've slid a few riders down. The rider from England's gone up to 23rd. That's Gary Burt Whistle. Those bikes sound good. Really good. There's Burt Whistle right there, and he's got help from Happy Trails Racing, which is Jeffrey Carver. He goes by the Spanish flat track champ, the 317, also out there a little bit off the pace. Ooh, on that last lap, the 117, who we were watching the whole time, yeah. he jumped all the way up to 15th. So Landon Smith found something right there in that last lap. So he comes in at a 18.960. So just six tenths slower than our, our fast time in this final round of practice of Chase Sadoff. Yeah, this is just practice. I'm not... Uh, not setting the world on fire with record times or anything like that, but they'll they'll go back there and they'll have something to judge off of, see where they stack up against everybody. And also just having the track time with the track man so much different than it was the, the first race. Mm -hmm. Here comes your hero, leading him out. It's the Boltaco Astro Invitational. Boltaco's made over there in Spain. There he is. They sound good, don't they? Oh, yeah, I love them. Two strokes. They scream. And they grab the compression release going into the corner to help slow you down. There you go. You can hear the yeah. compression release right there. That was perfect. Ronnie's still just as smooth as ever, isn't he? He sure is. When he uh, kind of came back and tried to maybe think about going for a main event in five decades and then six decades, <laughs> he got... He got a personal trainer, got really serious, and it doesn't look like he's a 59-year-old no, young man out there. Not at all. Grabbing a handful. Just running right up again the inside of that dirt berm on the inside of that turn number two. To, you know, kind of shorten up the track just a little bit. Yeah, you can tell these guys are definitely a lot, lot closer to the inside than the other guys. I think it's just the horsepower difference. And that thing was screaming right there. Dominic Bolak up there in second. He likes the loose tracks. He's from Canada. He actually won the Lima, Ohio National before. And Gonzo Garth Brout there to third. He was flying the other day over in Ocala and actually seized the motor right when he took the checkered flag. They had to completely rebuild that thing. Most of the time it's just the top end on these bull tacos. I said Cody Cop looks planted. Well, yeah. Ronnie Jones looks pretty dang planted as well. Really? He's, he's not too far off. 19.335. I didn't I didn't write down the last couple, but, uh, you know, sat up was at a 18.6 or something like yeah. that, 18.5. About eight tenths off the uh, AFT singles time. That's a single cylinder, man. We should yeah. throw him in there, right? <laughs> he would if they'd let him. Yeah, I bet. I bet he would. Oh, oh, one rider down. The 72 spins it on around. That 72 is Watt Campbell. Oh, he looks like his bike is seized up, oh. and he, he drops it, but he's trying to get out of harm's way. But Down again. Yep. Now he's got some fuel on the racetrack. Good thing is we're going to work on the racetrack when we get done with this practice group. Take a look at the replay of the 72. That's a blue, white, and black. Oh, there he is right in the middle of the track. And when you pick it up, that yeah. motorcycle's running like that. You've We've all done this, right? Yeah. That was the first crash. Just, <laughs> just takes off. Pulling the clutch, pulling the clutch. Nope. Nope. And then he, stalled, then he stalled it. Right. Yeah, then he stalled it. It's in gear. So if it just pulled in that clutch, it would have been a little bit easier. Nope. There's the second crash. That's all right. Yep. All right. There it is. That's what we're doing out here. It's Mission Foods. Daytona Flat Track, sponsored by Daytona Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. We'll be handing out the Pronto Parts Plus Pole Award. When we come back, opening ceremonies at 610.